Okay, so to give you an introduction to the book, I want to present an overview of some of the main arguments in the text, which is titled Domination is Abomination, Man's Oppression of Woman. The text presents a new theory of oppression. It has been assembled from the past 10 years of research in the fields of psychology, sociology, women's studies, feminist theory, and history. The data has organized itself into three separate categories and it has enabled me to conclude the following. So the theory states that oppression is carried out on three separate levels of the body, mind, mind and spirit. So once again, oppression across the globe in all its ways and forms is carried out, as I theorize, on three separate levels of the body, mind, and spirit. So on level one, we assault the body. Level one is assault upon the body, physically, sexually, and otherwise. Level two is assault upon the mind through the continuum of mind control, which begins with language, moving to rhetoric, persuasion, influence, onto mind control, and culminating in brainwashing, the most extreme form. Level three of assault upon the spirit involves the decimation of the spirituality, the spiritual practices, the religions of various cultures, and it also, on a micro level, can involve the disparagement or the belittling of spiritual practices relevant to a single individual. So those are the three levels. As I say in the text, when all three levels have been assaulted, the state which is achieved, I call what? Totalism. Totalism, exactly. So, slightly distinct from totalitarianism, the term that I'm using here is totalism, and it involves psychological oppression. Totalitarianism is more of a political term, political oppression, but I can assure you that all three levels are being assaulted in totalitarian dictatorships, for example. So you can take this theory of oppression, you can apply it, as I say, to an individual, a group, a family, or a nation, you can superimpose it upon a system of oppression and you can see if it applies. So if we take this and we apply it to human slavery, slavery in the Deep South, did we have level one assault upon the body? Yes. Yes, so physical assault, did we have sexual assault of the slaves? Absolutely, the rape of the slave women and most likely the children, we don't hear as much about that. Uh, did we have level two assault upon the mind? Did we practice mind control on the slaves? Yes, we did. How did we control their minds? What was one of the ways we controlled their minds? Education. Education. We didn't allow them to read. read. Didn't allow them to read a single book. Level three, assault them on the spirit. Did we assault their spirituality? Yeah. We did. So when they came over on the ships from their continent, we took away their indigenous spiritual practices. Uh, whatever they may be, and we told them they needed to practice what? Christianity. Yeah, Christianity. So that's an assault upon their spirituality. And this all contributes to their total oppression as a people. Now, this can also happen in a relationship, which is something that I argue in the text. So that was a macro level of oppression. Now we're going to talk about a micro level of oppression. In relationships, an abuser will follow the same methodology with the abused. So a male batter, for example, or just a male abuser who hasn't even begun to batter, will be operating on these three levels of assault. He'll assault the woman sexually. He'll begin to assault her physically over time. He will control her mind. He will begin to brainwash her by establishing the conditions of mind control, which I discuss in another video called the tactics of mind control. And then level three, it'll also begin to disparage her spirituality and whatever she undertakes to find strength and uh, spiritual support. So in this text, the good news is that uh, the text will discuss, as I say here on page two, how to identify tactics of domination so as to liberate yourself from them. 
and also how to identify physical and psychological symptoms of oppression so as to be able to recover from them. So it's a manual, essentially, that enables you to identify these dynamics in the culture. All of us are mind controlled in one way or another, as you see from reading chapter three. So I go into more detail uh, in each of these levels, and just to give you an example of that, um, for level two, what are some of the forms of sexual assault that we discuss in chapter two? Rape. 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 Pornography. Pornography. Molestation. Molestation. Incest. Incest. Exactly. So the physical can be battery, can be any type of physical abuse of individuals in any kind of an institution. So that's level two. Um, those are some of the details. I also look at the symptoms of assault, physical and sexual assault. What is the syndrome that develops if you are subjected to violence? Good. Repetition, compulsion, and? PTSD. PTSD. Good. So PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. And something, this is something that survivors of sexual assault have in common with veterans because anybody who has been subjected to violence is going to begin to develop symptoms of PTSD. The PTSD is the aftermath of violence. So you can experience PTSD from a violent car crash, for example. And I also use the term complex PTSD, and I take that from Judith Herman in her book, Trauma and Recovery. So the good news is recovery is possible from trauma, but it is a long road and an important road to undertake. So the difference between the PTSD and the complex PTSD is the following. PTSD usually results from single instances of trauma, and complex PTSD results from multiple instances of trauma, which is what we experience if we grow up in a home with domestic violence. It's what we experience if we are sent over to Iraq, and we, are, we experience the theater of war and multiple conflicts and combat. So. In addition uh, to that, we also spoke about repetition compulsion in chapter two, which is the notion of repeating or reenacting trauma. We talked about that last week. So what happens is the human psyche engages in repetition compulsion. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we repeat the trauma if we've experienced it? Yes. Yes, to change the outcome. So we will reenact the trauma in ways in order to change the outcome and make it a better outcome. Exactly. Is to feel in control of the situation. Right. It, yes. And so that that is probably one of the remo most remarkable components of traumatic reenactment is we, we would never think that people would reenact a trauma because a trauma is one of the worst experiences that happens to us in our life. But actually we do because we're trying to exorcise it like an exorcism, get it out of our system. So we reenact it until we feel that we've gotten it literally and figuratively out of our system. We also feel that we're in control. If we can play the trauma, replay it in our own minds and behaviors, then we feel at least we have control, whereas during the trauma, we did not have control. So um, that, those are some of the finer details of chapter two. Then in chapter three, we get into interesting components of mind control, the whole continuum of mind control. And I start by saying that that continuum begins with language, moves to, as I said, rhetoric, civil persuasion, influence, mind control, culminating brainwashing. Language is important, and that's something we discussed the other week. Language is creative. Language influences people. Language determines what we're going to create in our lives. The Native Americans, for example, believe that the word is creative. They, in, the, in Genesis in the Bible, we say, in the beginning was the word. The word is the origin of creation. So when we use the word, we don't want to use the word against ourselves because that is destructive, which is why I have a whole section in chapter three on the phallocentric language and the fact that women will use language against themselves to erase themselves, to call themselves 
benches and so on and so forth, um, ways that dehumanize themselves. So we, so language is important because you're also mind controlling yourself with your own language. The way you use language has an impact on what, how you feel about yourself. So that we try to get uh, individuals in the field of psychology to stop the negative self-talk and to engage in positive self-talk because that self-talk is creative as well as destructive. So language is important, rhetoric, uh, moving on to mind control uh, and the notions of what I call the indirect directives, the naturalistic transinduction, and the conversational hypnosis, which I'm going to go into more detail about later. And then under uh, level in chapter four, which addresses level three of the assault upon the spirit, where I talk about the decimation of goddess religions, not only on the continent of old Europe, but also the continent of North America, where we reside right now, and on the continent of Latin America. So we see a decimation of goddess religions in all three regions, and in fact, all over the globe, we're gonna talk about that more in detail, and the importance of honoring the feminine principle of the divine and reigniting the female archetypes of the goddess in order to empower womankind. So the beginning of the destruction of womankind actually starts with destroying the goddess, destroying the ultimate symbol of her empowerment. And that is how you begin to destroy any people so the spirituality is an important component of the three, and in some cases, it is the most important. Okay, so that's our introduction to the text. A little review for you. Hopefully that taught you something new. <laughs> if it just repeated, well, then now you're going to 